you know. <laughs> Wonderful to have you all here on this glorious day, and welcome to any visitors that we have, and to the people who are on YouTube or wherever watching. I'm so glad you could join us, and I hope that you will sing loudly today, unlike usual Episcopalians, because <laughs> we kind of really hit the, hit the sky with our, our joy and worship. So, finally, one could say, Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And the Lord said to Isaiah, I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. Former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy, and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered the first. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food 
shall be his. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 118. Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let his mercy not proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tent of my brothers. The right hand of the Lord is proud. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord is proud. I shall not die but live and declare the words to the Lord. The Lord has come to his sword when he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will open them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the Lord rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
according to the glory of you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found a stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinner and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them a night of terror, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. acceptable to you, God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We finally get to say hallelujah again after several weeks when we couldn't. And there's good reason to say hallelujah. Because today is Easter Sunday. A wonderful day, the day that changed everything. Yesterday I was listening to a podcast, and the host was N.T. Wright, former Bishop of Dallas, a prominent New Testament professor, and the interviewer was asking him what Easter was about. And in simple words, he said, Easter is the day that changed history. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, it is a new era. Some of you know the song, Because He Lived, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because He Lives, All Fear Is Gone. <coughs> Easter is a reason for us to rejoice. The readings we read all testify to this fact, beginning with the prophecy of the prophet Isaiah. He did not speak specifically about the resurrection, but he speaks of a time when God will create new heavens and a new earth, when the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. The time when death was final ended with the resurrection. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. The time when cruelty and hatred had the last word ended with the resurrection. We now know that Jesus overcame hate 
by his resurrection, those who dead do not have the sign of world. Death does not have the sign of world. Easter is the celebration of the triumph of good over evil, the triumph of life over death, the triumph of love over hatred, the triumph of light over darkness. Yes, as it seems to suggest in the prophecy from Isaiah, there are still things that are yet to be realized in this prophecy. But we have come a long way. Even a young man like myself, looking back at my time of growing up, so much has changed. And much of it can be attributed to the power of God to change, to change people's hearts, to the power of God to infuse his love in people's hearts and people open up. Yes, we still have pockets here and there of darkness and hatred, of discrimination, but we have come a long way. And that started when Jesus overcame all darkness and brought his marvelous light. Remember him saying, those who believe in me, who walk with me, who walk in my light, will not walk in darkness again. And so if we did Easter, is a day worth celebrating. How do we respond to that? I want to suggest that on this day, beginning this day, that we believe the things that God did on Easter day. That we believe the things God is doing. That, that same power, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is still at work today, changing people, transforming life. And I pray that we will believe that, that it is possible, that with God nothing is impossible. Change is possible. Goodness is possible. Love can indeed overcome hatred. May be difficult to believe when you look on your television and see the brutality and cruelty. But we need to have a big picture and look around for signs of light and love, the power of love. Resurrection life. My prayer is that we will not just believe it, but to rejoice in it. Rejoice in the fact that God, through Jesus, has overcome evil and goodness is all around us. <coughs> and live as though we are living in the resurrected life. Because you see, we are part, as I like to say, of making Easter a reality. We have a role to play. And the more we live in love, the more we live in victory, the more we live in freedom, the more Easter becomes a reality. It begins with us. And my prayer for you and me on this wonderful day is that we will believe the good news of God's power God's love, rejoice in it, and live in it. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the resurrection. Thank you that because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. Thank you that because he lives, all fear is gone. And how I pray that this will be true 
for all of us, Lord. Any of us who may be experiencing fear, Lord, that all fear will be gone. For Jesus promised that those who believe in him, even if they die, they shall live forever. Death is no longer final. Thank you, Lord. Help us to live into that reality, the resurrection life. Thank you. We love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. resurrection, let us stand and affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Vows 
we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all captives, prisoners, and those condemned to die, with whom the Holy One shares suffering and abandonment, that they may find strength, freedom, and forgiveness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, for whom Christ is risen with healing in his glorious wings, especially Kathy, Miriam, George, Richard, and Charlotte, Frankie, Deborah, Liz, those listed in our bulletin, and all who care for them, that they may be comforted and restored to fullness and strength, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that in Christ who triumphs over death, they may find life perpetual and blessed assurance, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are bereaved, that they may be filled with the spirit of faith and courage to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are celebrating their birthdays this week, especially David, Graham, Debbie, and others, for those who are celebrating their anniversaries, that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered in this assembly, and those joining us online, that we, like Mary Magdalene and her companions, may see the tomb empty, and joyfully believing, walk in newness of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are dear to us, our family, friends, and neighbors, that being protected and freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. This time we all invite you to offer your thanksgivings or intercessions, either aloud or in the silence of your heart. Eternal God, you are the strength and courage of all who call upon you. Hear our prayers and stretch forth your mighty arm to save and protect all our brothers and sisters in the human family through the gracious power of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's do it.
time is a big deal. If it was, <laughs> <laughs> if it was where I come from, we would do it. But uh, after 24 years of living in this culture, I know that time is very limited. <laughs> so anyway, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, following the service, there will be an opportunity to gather outside and in the parish hall to uh, enjoy some fellowship and greet each other and share some refreshments. So please join us. Uh, I want to call your attention to the announcements. One announcement that I would like to highlight is the Easter offering. Uh, if you brought your offering, uh, we will, we it is designated that the, the Easter offering will go to help the people of Ukraine um, in uh, various ways. Those who are refugees in neighboring countries or those displaced inside their own country. Uh, so uh, please be generous. Uh, but part of that, half of that will remain here. The, there's work and need that still is happening in the area. And so half of that offering will go to heaven of Lake Asamta counties that caters for the needs of women victims of domestic violence and rape. Uh, if you, you don't have an envelope, I think there are envelopes available. Uh, you could ask Anasha for an envelope if you need one. I also want to thank uh, those who have been able to respond uh, before because we started raising funds for Ukraine F relief effort about three weeks ago. So far we've raised 3,100 and we are hoping that with the Easter offering we will have a significant amount to send. Some of you may think, what will $3,000 do um, uh, on a problem as huge as what we are seeing. As one who has gone through such experience, I know it will make a big difference. Uh, I was involved at some point with similar relief work at a very small scale, and I was one of the organizing teams, and would go around to people, to organizations, and they would give us, for example, $500, and they would buy flour, and uh, we would give maybe two kilograms uh, of flour to each family. But today I meet some of them in various places where some have settled in this country and even in Europe and people will say, I know you. <laughs> I say, how do you know me? They say, you used to give us flour. And so it makes a huge difference in the lives of people and for some, uh, that two kilos of flour is all they, they had to feed their children. So please, when you, you give, well, however little you give, know that it will make a difference. Next Sunday, the bishop will be coming. We'll have 15 of our new members being received, confirmed or reaffirmed. And uh, it will be a big celebration at 10.30 a.m. We invite you to join us for that celebration. Uh, but following that, there will be a luncheon. Uh, many of you have signed up. Uh, we've ordered enough food to cover even those who haven't signed up. So if you make your mind up and you haven't signed up, uh, still come. Come and join us. If you are able to sign up before, that would be good. But if you are not able to sign up, you are still welcome to join us for the luncheon because we ordered enough food to cover everyone. It is worth celebrating in honor of our confirmants, but also the bishop, this will be his last visit here before he retired, so we would like to celebrate his ministry. Among us. I think that's all for, for now.
I wish you a very, very blessed and happy Easter. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
service continues with the Eucharistic prayer C. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, you were created and had our being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your holy son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Miriam, Deborah, and Ruth, God and Abba of our Lord Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Praise the Lord, you will us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honour, glory and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as the Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, 
for us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
Let us stand and pray. Ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.